What's up y'all dev, SBMTG, we like it a magic, and today we're going to look over a couple of decks before we do some gameplay with them. I know this is not how we usually do dank janks, rejoining rank, whatever we like to call it, right? But we just got done with the Dominaria Early Access, Dominaria United, Early Access stream, and we played a few different decks, including a couple of versions of Elisil Core. You guys know that this is the card that I'm most excited about in this new set, and probably the card I'm most excited about in the last... 10 years of playing Magic the Gathering, so we knew we had to play this card first tonight in a couple of different builds. Now, if you're interested, uh, you can go to Twitch and watch the VOD of the stream, and it's pretty long, it's like four hours, but at the very beginning, we build these two decks, both the Cleric's base version of, El of Ellis Elcor and, uh, and the sort of more generic, just powerful cards version of Ellis, Ellis in Wonderland over here. Um, and that... Is a process that took about half an hour, a little bit more. So I didn't just want to like front load this video with all of that. What I want to do instead is go through these dicks, these dicks, <laughs> is go through these decks <laughs> real quick. YouTube, don't demonetize me. Um, <laughs> and just kind of go through my thought process. Now, Ellis of Core, if you haven't seen it some for some reason, on one end, it's a Soul Warden. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain a life. And then uh, it's a Blood Artist. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So this has two really cool lines of text on it that I've liked for <laughs> most of my Magic life at this point. So I'm really excited to get to play you know, both of these abilities on just a two-drop. It seems really cool. So there's a couple of ways you can go with this. There's more than two, but we ended up on two. One, I wanted to do a Cleric's build, which is what you're looking at right here. You know, We've got some Clerics in the stack, like Lunark Veteran. Voice of the Blessed, which is really what we're doing in this pile, is trying to get this thing as big as possible. It's the only life gain payoff that we really have that's worth playing, I think, in Standard right now. So we might be looking for some better life gain payoffs. We could play the new Bant one, but then we'd have to play like four colors. I just don't think it's worth doing that, right? Might be worth it to draw some cards, but four colors is difficult. So we're going to play um, Voice of the Blessed, try to gain some life off of not only the front half of LSL Core, this first line of text, but also Lunark Veteran. Um, we can gain life off of Reckoner's Bargain. It's not Deadly Dispute, but if you're trying to gain life, then it works really well, right? Flesh Taker can also gain us life. It can also sacrifice things if we want to go sort of into an Aristocrats type plan with LSL Core, so that's nice. Um, we can also start sacrificing stuff and just get it back, whether we get it with um, Ritadrubic, however you pronounce this card. We can sacrifice a Legend and just make a 2-2, so we can sacrifice like an Elisil Core or something. We can sacrifice a Lisa and get it back as a 2-2. Um, if we have a Lisa out, we can sacrifice a Ritadrubic or an Elisil Core and just get them back into our hand end of turn. So we've got a lot of ways to sacrifice stuff and then recur it one way or the other, right? You know, if you want to do the Clerics thing, I think we need to wait for a few more good Clerics, but this is a decent starting point for the deck. We care about gaining life. Voice of the Blessed is pretty good with that, and it kind of ends up being the biggest creature in the deck. So just a neat way to play if you want to play it, but I think a better way altogether is probably, I've called it Ellis Normal, it's probably just the, again, just more generically powerful good cards version of the deck. You know, we've still got four copies of Ellis Hill Core and Elisa and two Ratadabric, so, or <laughs> Ratadrabic, Ratadrabic, that's probably it. Um, but we've got a couple more legends that work with Ritadrabic, too, like Braids, for instance. Just a couple of copies of this, because, um, you know, we can sacrifice stuff to it that kind of works with Elisil Core, and it's really annoying for our opponent. It comes up a couple of times. Um, Rite of Oblivion, another good way to sacrifice things if we need to do that. Whether, like, completed another legendary permanent, that's kind of interesting. Um... And this too, you know, we sacrifice stuff, we get to scry, eventually it becomes a creature. This actually performed pretty well tonight. Meat Hook Masker in the deck, because it's kind of another copy of Ellis Hill Core. Just another Blood Artist effect that can also sweep the board. Tenacious Underdog can come back, that's good. Cold Conscript can come back, that's good. And there's a line, especially on the play, where you go like Cold Conscript into Tenacious Underdog, and you just put five power on the battlefield the first two turns, which isn't bad. <laughs> Again, especially on the play. So the deck can get aggressive, right? But it can also fill the battlefield with stuff to sacrifice or clog the board state, like Wedding Announcement. We can draw a couple of cards off of Welcoming Vampire. Enrique Domnathi draws cards and is also a legend, by the way, so works pretty well with, with Tadrubic. Um, Soren the Mirthless draws cards, gains a little bit of life here and there, and makes a dude that we can sacrifice if need be. But anyway, I don't want to waste too much more time. There's a lot of gameplay to get to, if you can't tell. So let's go ahead and get to Stream Dev playing a few games with the Clerics deck, and then I'll cut back in for just a second, and then we'll play a few games with this deck.
up against Akia Marstaro for the first one. We get to go first, and it's looking okay, to be honest. This isn't bad. Conscript or veteran on turn one? I think we go conscript. Although, yeah, we have to now. I guess, yeah, I mean, like, we could have gone caves. Lunark veteran tried to draw untapped white source for voice, but we wouldn't have done that. So I'm pretty happy with my decision, I guess. Let's <laughs> go caves. Get in. Now I do wish that I had a third white mana next turn. I do, but I needed an untapped white this turn. So. Can either play veteran or hold up Reckoner's Bargain, one or the other. I think I'll play vet though. Ouch! <laughs> we go to 19. <laughs> That's fine. That's <laughs> good to have pain lands in standard. Opponent plays tapped Rafine's Tower and says go, so they're on Esper. In the no fun zone. No fun zone! So. Guess we just swing play voice of the blessed. I wonder if we get swept like super soon here. <laughs> it could happen. It's voice of the blessed. We go to 18, but then we go to 19. It's fine. This is fine. If our opponent has sweeps, there's a problem. They have cut down. Good new removal spell. Cut down. Change the game. They have three untapped mana this turn. They say go. That's makes you nervous, doesn't it? Guess we'll come in. Try to pop them in the face. See if they do something about this conscript. No? Okay. They go to 12, right? Okay, yeah, they go to 12. It's still a relatively high life total here. We barons. Let's just Lunark Veteran. Hold up this bargain. Smell something nasty coming. See if our very first game in the new standard we get meat hooked on this turn. Well, maybe not, because they're fading hope. Could have bargained there, but I don't think that's correct. <laughs> One thing or the other, the very first game of the new standard we're playing against Blue Black Control. What a fun person they are. <laughs> it's so fun. Tap Rafine's Tower. I can still hook for one. I don't think they're going to. Let's just go. <laughs> we draw another veteran. Well, we do like the card, but do we like it that much? You know what I mean? Veterans come in. Put them at 10. We still haven't drawn the premier card in our deck. I'd like to do that. Let's just Colt Conscript, Lunark Veteran, and then that way, even if they sweep us, we can try to keep some pressure on them, right? Now we have Bargain Up. We also have, um, if they do sweep us, we can just bring Colt Conscript right back to the battlefield, so that's pretty cool. They have another cut down. Yeesh. Yeesh. That kind of sucks. All right. Well, let's sacrifice the conscript, draw a couple cards. Now's a good time to do it. Tapped out for their turn, but whatever. Sure, gaining a lot of life. It'd be great to have that voice of the blessed out here. That'd be nice. The infernal grass. They might not have a sweep in their hand if they keep bothering to remove our guys. Lisa Shatterite Priest. It's pretty good. Here comes Ooh, Runo Stromkirk. Maybe I spoke too soon. I judge our opponent, and I shouldn't have done that. It's a right of oblivion. We could play the no fun role here if we wanted to. <laughs> Do I want to a little bit? <laughs> kind of. Runo's pretty good. Sure. Sure. Sacrifice a uh, Lunark veteran. I'll probably just get back Colt Conscripts. Oh, nice. <laughs> they shore up their Runo. They want to make absolutely sure their Runo stays in play. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, 
Now things are tough. All right, let's call conscript. No attacks. See if they uh, transform Runo here. They don't. Play a terror. Ooh, a Talarian Terror. Let's give him another nice. Double Terrors. Let's go. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good, dude. Ooh, ooh, it's a Serpent, so it works with Runo. That's, ooh. Ooh, yes, ma'am. I, I, I kind of like that a lot, actually. Okay. Get the big brain on Brad over here. Lots of choices. Lots of choices. But Lisa may be the correct one. When it's down to one card, we just kind of take a shot in the teeth next turn, and that's fine. They do get to duplicate a terror, though, and I... I'm not super happy about that. <laughs> but I guess maybe we lease it. That last card in their hand might be removal. They seem they tend to have removal. <laughs> we keep seeing that over and over. Of course, if they do transform it, they might not swing with it. But they don't transform it. They swing with it here. They get to copy its hair, but they, they lose their runo. So. Depends on what they drew. It does. They play a land... Let's see how the cookie crumbles here. They come in with both terrors. Sure. <laughs> we'll just go to 17. Do some thinking on that one, but I think that's okay. Okay. Voice of the Blessed, huh? Well, we're setting up a little combo here, but how does how do we want to proceed? You know, we voice of the blessed, shadow right priest. All right, so we got some big boys. Yeah, just those guys. Yeah, Runo blocks the vet. They take four. They go to four. We go to 23. We gain life, so we get a 6-6. Six, six. See if they transform their Runo. That could change the game. They don't. And they scoop. All right, really cool first deck to play against. And I am not sure how many opponents are going to let us construct this battlefield. It really took us a while to do that. But looking okay. I mean, again, even against a sweeper here. We would have done all right. We have a Colt Conscript. We can bring the Lunark Veteran back. Uh, Voice of the Blessed probably wouldn't die to a thing. Lisa would just bring everything back anyway. So Maybe the Cleric's version of the deck, or even both of them, could get in like good position against Meat Hook, which is where you want your sort of mid-range aggro hybrid to be. But against that, we played against, what, four different removal spells there? And we still somehow played through. So Okay. I'll get another one. I'll get another one. Let's try it. Yeah, 100% win rate. Let's go. <laughs> Last card, Emperor for sure. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Terror seems these so far. Yeah, it's the first time I've seen it, but I have thoughts about it. It almost ended up on the sleepers list. I think Terror might be okay. I think it's good in Pauper. We go first. That'll make any deck look good. So far, we've run into the problem twice where we can't, you know, turn one one drop into Voice of the, of the Blessed on turn two. But maybe we draw an untapped white source. Maybe we do. One way or the other, I am going to drop caves here, turn one. And then play Cult Conscript. Even though we could not pay life for that. I think the idea that we get Voice of the Blessed next turn is too tempting. Could draw anything. Could even be a boat. Let's see what FD Territory is doing over there. They get an overgrown farmland. All right, let's drop Swamp. Take her. Sure. They give us a hello. Let's tell them hello. <laughs> and put them at a parody with our life total. <laughs> Caves of Colos put us at 18. We put them at 18. <coughs> I wonder if the hello was like, come on, man. <laughs> I'm thinking. All right, so opponents on... Ooh, Naya, the Thran Portal is red. I like it. Maybe we should have played Thran Portal, you know? Portal's pretty good. 
Scoured Baron, so we're not going to be able... Hmm... To get to Voice of the Blessed this turn. We draw an untapped whatever next turn that we can... Voice of the Blessed into Shatter Eye Priest. That could be okay. Well, let's swing them in. These big boys. One goes to 13. Let's ride up Oblivion. I think this is okay. Sacrifice the Conscript. Scan a life and scry one. Hey, I want that caves. I want that caves real bad. Let's put it on top. So go. I'm taking some damage from our lands this game, but that's fine. It's gonna happen this standard. It's just gonna speed games up. That's how I like to look at it. They're taking damage from their lands too. They want to tap their in portal for red. Which they didn't. Well, I guess they did, actually. <laughs> you tap for colorless, right? No, it doesn't. Wow, okay, I forgot about that. All right, caves. Caves, uh, you know, we could set up a voice to bless Shatter Eye Priest. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one, pay five, make a dude, sacrifice it, things you control get indestructible, and hexproof. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to write a oblivion that first anyway, so I think I'm just gonna play out like voice the bless and the Shatter Eye Priest. Make our voice a 3-3 three, three, and say go. And the next turn, if I have to ride of Oblivion, I have to sacrifice a pretty decent creature to do that. It's, that kind of sucks. Maybe I can just set up Ride of Oblivion. Just swing with everything. They block and kill something. Get back cold conscripts. That sets up Ride of Oblivion. That right, could work. Katilda. Okay. Okay. Neat. Like humans. Human creature control, yeah, okay. So we have three mana right now, is what that means. We have scoured barons. That's not the worst draw ever, I guess. Gain some life. So whenever I sacrifice a creature, no, it's another creature. I guess it wouldn't see itself get sacrificed. I really would like that scry and life gain though. But if I sacrifice the priest, that's going to basically give voice minus one, minus one, it'll defeat the point, so. It's like, what if I just play Shatter Eye Priest and swing? Like, that, you know, what are they going to do? It's a 5-5, five, five. they can double block it, but it won't kill, you know, so. I think Ride of Oblivion is just correct, though. Sacrifice Taker. Running out of cards in our hand though, and they're not something I worry about. Well, you got like a protection spell. Oh, that would be so boss. That'd be really good. Cabaretti charm. Oh, oh, pretty gross. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. Pretty gross. We can still get in though. All right, the cap already charmed our anthem away, so now we're just down to a voice of the blessed. So no real way to gain life. It's kind of lame, but we can play another anthem next turn. See if they can play a thing bigger than a four-four. We shall see. What you got territory VIP? FD territory. Is this FD signifier for playing the YouTuber? That'd be awesome. I love him. <laughs> They go to seven, they tap out for Elspeth Resplendent. Okay, that'll get you right back on board. That's pretty good. So they reach off the top seven here. It's an Adeline. Wow, that's good. That's good. Pretty good. We go to 17. They have a 3 4 Adeline. Oh, we get a Lunark Veteran. I'll take it. Veteran, Shatterite Priest. Choose up to one target creature. Put a plus one, plus one counter and counter from among flying, first strike, lifelink, vigilance. Okay. So I probably do need to come in at this Elspeth. I probably do. Now if I do that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we take seven next turn, something like that.
All right, so they get rid of the shield counter on their Adeline. Adeline? Eh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> See if they can recover here. That was a very important turn. They put a plus one, plus one counter on the Adeline, and... Also, lifelink, of course. And then they tap it for mana. Did you mean to do that? Probably not. You know, you press Z and it undoes. If you want to press Z. You can you can press Z to undo. I wish I could tell them that. You can press Z to undo. No, no, no. You can press Z to undo. You can press Z to undo. No! <laughs> hefty territory. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you press Z to undo. Did you actually, did you take another action in between and I just didn't see it? You can press C. It was a good, it was such a good, it was shaping up really well. If, if I feel like if we had drawn like a land there, it would have sucked. But maybe we sack the veteran and go get a Lisa. And like, that's good. Plus profit, you know what I mean? Like, maybe that works. I'm not sure. But, okay, we're 2-0 oh with Clerics. Why, hello. Wasn't that delightful? The Clerics version of the deck seems relatively strong, but sometimes the synergies don't pop off the way you want them to. So I think that maybe the answer to that is, again, just to play a deck with more generically powerful stuff. These cards are just good. <laughs> I'll bring that up a little bit later in the video during the gameplay, how I think you can get out of some pretty sticky situations with this deck by just not counting on synergy so much, like the Clerics version, and just playing good magic cards. Turns out that's pretty decent a lot of the time, so let's go ahead and get to it. Let's finish off with a few games with this version of the deck. Opponent goes first. That's the first time that's happened tonight. See how much of an effect that has. Conscript into Underdog, though? Like, if we were on the play, that would be sick. Savannah Lions into, you know, three power guy? <laughs> Not bad. Right of Oblivion with Cold Conscripts or Underdog, both, they both looks pretty good, too, so... See what Sandy Dog MTGs. Hey, I've heard of you. Sandy Dog MTG, I know you. See what they're doing. Hot shot mechanic. Their turn is so they get to do aggro stuff on the play. That's gonna hurt. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, let's just conscript off our swamp. Savannah Lion twins here. Gotta love it. Play mechanic, so. I wonder if they're just doing the artifact thing. Another mechanic. Nice. We get taken down. There's two damage. Another caves. Let's play that into underdog. Sure. See if they take the trade here. They do not. Okay, we're both at 18. Out of line. We've played against that card a few times, haven't we? we got a 14 already. Jeez. There's a Lisa. That's pretty good. I guess I can just grasp the Autoline. I think I want to do that while they're tapped out. Very likely. I could also hook for one. That would be, like, sneakily okay, but nah. Let's go ahead and rip this Autoline out of their life. we we'll go to 12. Let's no attacks. Peacekeeper. Hey, we get our first look at this card. See what they take. My bet is Masker, but it could be Adeline. Or not Adeline, uh, Lisa. Honestly, it could be any of these cards. <laughs> these are all good cards in our hand. But I think Lisa is probably especially good here. Hook for one is okay here. And yeah, they name Massacre. Now, Hook for one costs five. A little harder to do. It's probably better to just put Lisa in play if we're going to do that. I'll trade with one and go to ten. It's a compromise. Because, you know, underdog can block Peacekeeper. I think we want that. Throw down this Plains. You know, I could just dry hook. <laughs> There's an idea. But no. Let's just say go. Opponent still has some cards in their hand here. See if they make the lease or harder to cast with another Peacekeeper. That would be kind of terrible. <laughs> Ooh, Adversary is bad. That's so bad. That's bad, man. That's really bad. They only come in with Peacekeeper. 
Block the Thunder Dog. Eh. Being on the play here probably helped an awful lot for them. But that's okay. That's okay. We got another source here. Sure. Play that instead of caves. And play Lisa. No attacks. Really riding the edge here. There's a brutal Cathar. God, dude. Dude, would you not be so annoying? That'd be awesome. They come in with the adversary. That's neat. We go to three, though. They just wanted lethal. Like, there's just nothing we can do at this point. I mean, we can kill the uh, Brutal. Actually, can we just hook for two? One, two, three, four. Yeah, just hook for two. Sure, that'll actually be a good play. <laughs> I'm going to leave the uh, Peacekeeper up, but that's fine. We get a Lisa. Now, they could kill us here. Maybe. They might not be able to kill us this turn, but another Brutal would just be exactly that. Here comes Sarah Paragon. Nice. Super nice. They get a hot shot off that. Very cool. Very cool. Sarah Paragon's doing it. See, this is hard. Because I can Colt Conscript and Rite of Oblivion and get rid of the Sarah Paragon and bring us back to parody. But that's like all I can really do. I guess I can get the other Colt Conscript back. Yeah, let's just go Conscript. Right of Oblivion. Target the Paragon. I could also sack the Massacre here. I don't know how good that is, though. Yeah. Yeah, let's just do that, because this will come back to my hand. I can also just get back the other Colt Conscript. Good attack here. Might be okay in case they do draw, like, a Brutal. Yeah, if they draw Brutal or some other removal spell, they just kill us. So I think it's actually better to go up to 9. Hey, could I not get back? Oh, it's, yeah, another non-skeleton creature. That claw's got me. <laughs> Guardian of Nubanalia. What's the last card in your hand? It's, not, ah, it's another Adeline. Jeez. We go to 3. There's Ellis. We find it three games in. We finally draw this card. Mm. So we can't Ellis and Cold Conscript and Ride of Oblivion. I want to do all those things in the same turn. We just can't do it. We just can't do it. We're at three there at seventeen. They got a bunch of dudes on the table. We do have a life linker. If we go Ellis into Ritadrabic, I mean, that's... that. I think I'm going to take this line. It's a weird line, but it's it's my favorite of all of these lines. <laughs> so I'm going to try this. We go to four. If we attack, we go to eight. We don't really have good blocks, though. Yeah, no attacks. <sighs> this is a good setup, but is it going to be good enough? I mean, I don't... Again, I think that um, play draw here really created a bad balance. Is the last spell in your hand a removal spell? Is the, It would be the thing they drew this turn, too. That would be... Abject pain. That would, that would hurt so badly. <laughs> they didn't do anything. They turn it to nighttime. Is that the right time? Swamp. Cult Conscript. Come on, bud. What you got? What you gonna do, Sandy Dog? All right, we gain a life. We go to five. Let's ride of oblivion. I guess we target the Adeline. That makes sense. Sacrifice conscript. Now we're doing aristocrat stuff. We're doing major aristocrats things here. We put him at fifteen. Get rid of the Adeline. Cold Conscript comes back to our hand at the end of turn here. Do I swing? Puts us at nine. Still have a three three blocker. Go to three. Well, really we gotta like four. Actually, yeah, I think I I mmm. 
Again, I think we do, guys. I actually think I'm going to do it. What is the one card in your hand? Why wouldn't you play it, you know? Is it an Emperor? That would be sick. Ah, it's not, though. Good. Good, good. good. Conscripts comes back to our hand. Lisa's cool. All right, if they kill any of our guys, they come back as two twos. This is a sticky situation, but opponent does have two cards left. But if they remove anything, right? They remove the Lisa, it comes back as a two two. If they, yep, they remove Radadabric or whatever, it comes back to our hand. So, Vic, we got a little soft lock. <laughs> Oh, we did it. <laughs> we did it, baby. Um, we just, we somehow got the right cards on the table. That's what this deck wants to do, and we pulled it up. We go first. We need to draw some lands. No one drop. I would really like a one drop here. It's the thing, in the Cleric's version of the deck, you get Lunark Veteran, and you get Colt Conscripts. Don't get that here. Kind of lame. We want more ones. There's another reason for Dockside Chef, like maybe a second Dockside Chef, because we want more one drops. We've got to get on board. I'd like to, at least. Rafine's Tower on turn one for the opponent. Caves into Underdog. Just I'm the dog. Yeah, they call me the dog. The bounty hunter. Okay, so opponent goes Rafine's Tower again. We did not draw the land. Oh, no. I don't know why I thought I would. That's that's the stream for you. We'll draw it next turn. <laughs> totally negating the advantage we got by going first. I mean, I get, not really, because we got a 3-2 on the board on turn 2. So. It's still worth something. Maybe opponent didn't draw their third land either. <laughs> Maybe. We, God. They play Xander's Lounge. Uh, that's funny. That's funny. They have four domain right now. I wonder if that's what they're doing. Let's just try to get in for six. <laughs> See if they, nope, they don't have removal spells. Well, let's keep the faithful absence up. I mean, we might be able to pull this off, depending on what they try to put on the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, we're on a two-turn clock right now. Tap Thran Portal. Yeah, they're playing domain all day. There's a land. There it is. Let's go. Alright, that means we're going to draw a card off Wedding Announcement when we drop that. Which is welcome. We go to five. Wedding Announcement. Yeah. 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 So I don't just keep up Faithful Absence, but we just play it next turn if we have to. It's whatever. You're a Colt Conscript. Opponent now on five. They have full domain. Because blue, white, black, red. Well, no. No, they need green. Huh. Okay. Maybe they're not trying to do that. They, they soar in the Mirthless. They put a creature out. And then we get a land. And we play Faithful Absence. And our opponent dies. So that was pretty, pretty uneventful game. Maybe they have something for one white here. Let's find out. Let's come straight in at them. They are dead. Okay, cool. Dot Esports. Um... They're trying to do something really cool. I know they're definitely trying to do something extremely cool over there. All right, we got LSL Core in our opening hand. We go first. There's a Ritadrovic. We can curve into Wedding Announcement. Sick. It's like we're missing the one drop, but whatever. I can't can't be too upset. It seems selfish. Opponent goes untapped Black Source on turn one. Let's play a Plants and an Elas Ilcor. On board, turn two. Hasn't happened all night. They're going to kill it. <laughs> I'm going to read it first. They play another black source. This might be a mono black deck. I wonder if they play um, Liliana next turn, so we really should play Wedding Announcement. So they don't make us just sack the Ellis. Of course, maybe they just have um, removal spell into Liliana, and then we have to discard, and that's just the worst possible situation. But maybe we can just blitz the underdog into it, and that'll be fine. All right, so caves, yeah, sure. Let's try and get in. 
They give us the damage. Wedding announcement. Okay. Give us the dude. Give us the dude. Yay. <laughs> we gained a life. <laughs> So that's the uh, Soul Warden part of our... Why didn't you Infernal Grasp it earlier? Why did you... You strung me along for that long? <laughs> Why did you do that? Okay. Cool. You even let me gain life and everything. <laughs> All right. Let the trigger go off on wedding announcement? Like, if you knew you were going to kill the Ellis, just kill the Ellis. All right. So opponent plays third land. They are very, very strict when it comes to do things at the very, very last second. Even to their own detriment. <laughs> They're at 16, Liliana of the Veil. How did I know? We called it. Please make me discard. Please make me discard. Nope, target player sacrifices their wedding announcement token. I could Retadrabic here and then just, um... And then... Well... I Retadrabic, they have removal spell. They make us discard the Tenacious Underdog, and we just blitz it in. So it's like, that would be, they have to discard a card, and that probably sucks for them, but we have to discard a card, and it doesn't matter to us. <laughs> it does take our whole next turn, though, and we're not, like, guaranteed to pull it off, so I think we just blitz in the Underdog now. Draw our card, do our stuff, kill the Liliana. It'll be fine. Maybe they have another Lily? Could be. No we get a 1-1. One, one. Draw a weatherlight completed. Okay. Maybe. They throw down a Takenuma and a Shield Red. Uh oh. We drew a card, so we lose two life. Cool. Alright, we're going to lose another two to Infernal Grasp here. We go to 15. And I guess we can weatherlight completed. Sure. Iganjo is a land. Do I want that? I want to keep it as a removal spell. I might. Swing, we're at parity in terms of life now. I guess if I draw a Lisa, I can just play the Aganjo and then play the Lisa. I don't have to play this Aganjo. I don't know. If we play it now, then a future Meat Hook could be bigger. Eh, I think I'll keep it. Alright, wedding announcement flips over. We got a couple of 2 twos. See what Lilith does up there. I should have known you were a Liliana player. This is a cool mono black deck, though. Like Liliana into Shieldred, you know you're gonna have a good time. So, see if they just hook us. A hook for two here would be okay. I don't know what we're doing next turn, right? Maybe we could get um Rat, the Rat Man down, and do that. Or we can play Wedding Announcement, and honestly, like, a second Wedding Announcement does not seem bad. <laughs> it really doesn't. Could make them ward. I mean, that's the thing. We play Retadrabic. They could just Infernal Grasp it, but it costs, like, their entire turn. But now they have all their mana untapped. We get another Wedding Announcement. Jeez. That's a lot. Swing with both guys. Oh, that was quick, but it seemed like they had to click through it. They go to 11. I'm just going to keep pestering them with wedding announcements. That seems correct. And then if, like, you know, if a wedding announcement gets bad enough, it's just going to, you know, if it gives us enough creatures and then they get swept, just whether, like, completed becomes a guy. So, seems good. In the meantime, I get to draw a card here. In the meantime, you know, I guess we get scries. They Takenuma. What do you get back? Ooh, they're playing uh, Reckoner's Bargain. They just get back the Shieldred. Okay. We do need removal for that. We don't have it right now. We didn't draw it, but we did draw a card, so we lose two life. <laughs> Elisil Core. By the way, that makes the Aganjo cost two. But... We really don't have anything else we can do. There. Well, let's just try to get him for some damage, and then we can Iganjo if they block. They do. Sucker! Let's play, let's play Iganjo. <coughs> they go to nine. 
They're going to go to even less. <laughs> we also get a scry off of Weatherlight completed. It's coming together, baby. We don't want that land. We get to uh, draw a card off of Wedding Announcement. These cards are really important, dude. Here comes Liliana. You going to make everybody discard, or are you going to make us sack this token? Yeah, target player sacks. Cool, thanks. <laughs> awesome. Let's get a scry off of completed. Oh, it's a faith. It's a faithful absence. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, we want that. We have options, though. I could get down Retagibic into Cult Conscript, Conscript, and that's not terrible. But I think we'll just faithful absence this Liliana away. Ah, looks good. Looks pretty good. Yeah, no, it's, I know it's not. It's not how, how things were supposed to go, Liliana. It's not. You were supposed to be the best card in standard. Whoops. Okay, let's get in with LSO Core. Put him at four. Mad Dope Rhymes. We're going to gain a couple of life. Wedding announcement triggers twice. Flips over. Everything's a 3-3. Three, three. Elisal Core's a 4-4. Four, four. They can not hook it away. Wow. Okay. That's great. <laughs> That's great news. They can play a third Liliana, though. <laughs> Please make a sack of creature. Yeah, cool. That's fine. Whatever. We'll get a scry. They'll take a damage. Oh, Ellis, I love you. I knew I would love you. I knew. I knew I would love you. Oh, Tenacious Underdog. Oh, what a wonderful card to have on top. We'll scry that to the tap. To the tap! <laughs> tenacious Underdog comes down. Yeah, fine, whatever. It's cool. Let's uh, blitz this Tenacious Underdog in from our hand. Gain a life. Let's go Conscript, because why not? I guess because we take a damage, and that kind of sucks, but whatever. We'll go right back up. Then we'll just uh, come on in. Come on in, corn dog. <laughs> yeah, good game, opponent. It truly was. Good job, Lilith. Whew, well, we beat the Mono Black Liliana deck that plays three Lilianas in the same game. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, this, this deck looks cool. Both of these decks look cool, by the way. I don't know. Somebody in chat said this deck is insane. I don't know if you mean the Mono Black deck or this one, but like, <laughs> both look pretty good. Whether like completed with them scries, though, it's pretty good. If this had become a creature at any point in the game, it would have been sick. <laughs> it would have been very cool. Wedding announcement was the MVP, but again, again, this is like the third time time we've seen Elso Core just gets them into this like you know even if they can kill other stuff, it just locks them up like they can't kill stuff with Elso Core on the table. Mm mm mm. What a what a deck. What a deck. What a deck. We gotta perfect it. We gotta perfect it, Wizards. Everyone, all everyone. <laughs> we gotta figure out like the best build here because I'm already in love with this deck, <laughs> but I'm 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 not being objective. You guys know how much I wanted to play this card, like from the jump. <laughs> Both decks, lol. <long>, yeah. <laughs> it's been a good night. Only four and one. It's been all right. No black mana and two Elisil Core. Come on, man. It's the second time that's happened. I guess we, that just tells us we need like to readjust. <laughs> Maybe not. Nothing but black mana. That's a better hand, though. Oh, do I get rid of this hook? I think I do. <laughs> I think I actually do. I just try to curve, you know. All right. Go first. Turn one, conscript. Once this dragon takes a seat over here. It took way too long for him to fly over there. All right. Deserted beach. Life is a beach. All right. Let's get in. Cold conscript. Weather light completed. Braids next turn. Happy feet. It's a this deck is sick, dude. <laughs> All right, opponent. Oh, opponent plays Plaza of Heroes. Nice. Beans and rice. That's nice. Oh, Sten. Okay. Choose a card type other than creature or land. The card type costs one less. What do you say they play planes? They they pick Planeswalker here. I just bet. I just bet. What's gonna be? What's gonna be ice man what you got for me let's go yeah hit it come on bernie online he's got to choose a card type that's all i gotta do just you're playing plaza of heroes choose planeswalker and then next turn you play a four drop planeswalker easy peasy that's what this deck does. Right? Come on, man. 
Enchantment. It was really difficult. It was a difficult one. They went enchantment. Okay. Hmm. Cool. Super cool. Well, I'm going to try to get in. They don't block. I thought they might. I thought they might. Braids. I'm going to sacrifice this creature. Do I want to sack a land? Do I want to? Because, like, I have a land. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I've, got, I've got a land I can play next turn. still have um, three lands. I'll draw Soren next turn if I do that. It's like a guarantee. Or I'll draw another two drop. I'm going to sack this Conscripts. Come on, let me draw a card. Let me draw a card, dude. Let me draw. Let me draw a card. Should I get to scry first, right? Because weatherlight completed. Do I not, dude? Look at do you, guys. I should get to scry before I draw, like before that. Well, maybe not. Maybe that's not how it works. Judge. <laughs> All right. So we <laughs> we drew a tenacious underdog. They did let us draw there. Colt conscripts on top. Nah. Right. Because I can just underdog. Into, an, into a right of oblivion next turn if I want to do that. Or we're gonna just dash in the underdog. I don't know. I think we just do better than conscripts. I wonder if I can sack something to braids and get back conscript the same turn, or if I have to like full control to do that. Guess we'll find out. They don't do anything. Oh, they're low on lands. Kind of sucks for them. All right, let's blitz in underdogs, press our luck here, press our advantage while we can. Ooh, that's a cute little combo, right? Weather light completed and underdog keeps blitzing in, putting counters on completed. That's neat. I wonder if EOT, I can sack the underdog to the braids if they don't block. Of course, even if they, let's see, even if they don't have a creature on the table, I guess you just sacrifice the underdog EOT. Yeah, yeah, sacrifice underdog. And I get to draw two, if, if some, right? Because Underdog died, so that's one draw. And then, yep, that's actually sexy, dude. Oh, and I do get to scry before this one. Put the land away. Draw a Rite of Oblivion. That's good, man. Like, as soon as they actually land a card, we can just kill it. We have three, four removal spells in our hand. Or we can just keep blitzing in Underdog, which is pretty good. Here comes her Fiend. Okay. That's a good card. They connive. Let's see if they can get its power up. I wish we could have seen more of our opponent's deck here. Not to say they're dead. They might not be dead. I don't want to presume that. This will cost three, so we can't do anything else this turn. Kind of sucks. Still should do it, though. We get a 13 off of this, by the way. It's lower than I would have thought. I'm doing it. I'm gonna try. I'm just. I want to try this. So we can still play Oblivion, Wedding Announcement. We cannot dash in the Tenacious Underdog, which could suck, which could, but I still want to try this line. You know, this way we still get to draw two. We probably draw on top land. Maybe we don't. But either way, I want to see what opponent does here. They have made enchantments cost less, but they still haven't played an enchantment. Yep, they let us draw, and we draw on untap land. Never punished. Cool. So they go to one. They might have to play multiple untapped dudes here to win the game. Hook is also potentially an idea, but we can't hook away our own braids yet. If we could hook away our own braids, we'd just win the game. So, but it doesn't look like it's happening right now. The opponent still has six in their hand. It's a lot. So let them take some time here to make a choice. If we had our hook in play, we dashed in underdog, <laughs> they would just die EOT when it dies. That's a thing. 
I'm not sure how good <laughs> two untapped lands. I'm not sure how good Weatherlight Completed actually is. They called our bluff, so we can't just get in, but maybe we can. Let's dash in the underdog. Go to 11 to do that, by the way. But if both these guys die right here, that then Weatherlight Completed is almost a creature. So I'll take it. And we'll get to draw some cards here. Like Tenacious Underdog dies, we draw some. Cool, cool. Urtai Resurrected. Pretty nice. Pretty nice, dude. Pretty nice. It's a good card. See what they block. They're going to block Braids. That makes sense. Or not block, but kill Braids with Urtai's ability. Wedding announcement on top. We've already got one. Let's try for something else. Hasn't been good enough to play yet, so I don't know that two is where we want to be. All right, they block with Urtai. Cool. So that was the proper way to handle that for them. We get a scry. Ooh, Retadrabic. Doesn't actually do that much right now. So we don't have any legends. Except for Weatherlight. <laughs> but I'm not that worried about it. Opponent has to remove Weatherlight or die, basically. But even if they, even if they play Flying Blocker, like Masker is an idea... We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Five mana next turn. It looks like they do have removal spell. They're holding on, though. Boy, are they. But maybe we just go Fateful Absence, Tenacious Underdog next turn. Or we can go um, Fateful Absence. Uh, that'll cost us a life. Fateful Absence, Wedding Announcement. They don't do anything. Oh, it's an Ellis. Oh, it's so tempting. <laughs> <laughs> That's so tempting. <laughs> what is the line? This is one of those where it's like there's a million cards in front of me and I don't know which like what's right, you know. Try to land hook for 3 or just try to land dry hook, you know? Like that's that's a thing. I land Ellis. What's their play going to be? Well, let's just play Hook. Let's just play Hook. Hey, Zero. Let's try to put him in a double bind. I'm missing. So I just know that I'm... Screwing this up. Airtie resurrected. Man. Okay. That's fine. What's gonna do, Airtie? Gonna counter the hook? You're gonna kill the weather light. Airtie looking pretty good, isn't he? Where's the scry? Yeah, put that on bottom. Hook comes down. LSO core. Cold conscript. And now we're in a pretty good position. We go to 11. And they're at 1. Right, if Oblivion can win the game, just a lot, a lot can win here. But you know, they they can postpone losing the game <laughs> in a number of ways. I think so. It's like script then write. Were they tapped out? Yeah, I probably could have just done that. That probably would have been the thing to do, right? Play the Conscript, Rite of Oblivion, something away after, you know, Meat Hook, and then Conscript, Rite of Oblivion. Yeah, I probably missed that trick. I knew I was missing something. I didn't have to have both. Maybe that's what it was. I wanted to have both Blood Artist effects out, but we still won. I figured we probably would, unless they had, like, specifically Exile effects. This is a pretty cushy place to be, but if I missed Lethal on a turn, then that's still a bad thing. A lot of decisions with this deck. But yeah, I did miss that one. So, But we still won. Opponent goes. 
looks a little awkward. Like, the hand looks a little bit slow, but at least we can kind of curve. On the play, this would look way better, but I'm still going to try it. Still going to try it. We got two hours. Yeah, we're at two hours and one minute now, so I think we might build another deck here soon. Got a bunch of games out of this one, and it's, it looked pretty good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do we have a fellow Orzov player over there? Ooh, now we can curve even more. Hand ended up looking really good. All right, we get our conscript. Arena, often make sure that you get... Oh, they're on Mardu. Good, good, good. Yes, LSL core. Nice. <laughs> Let's give them the nice. We are brothers. Or perhaps sisters. <laughs> get them with gold conscript. They will not block. And if they don't, then that is massive disrespect to their own LSL core. Yeah, they, block, they don't. Weather light completed comes down. Let's say go. I have wanted to see this deck in Mardu. Let's see what they can do. Show me what you got and all that. <laughs> Only deck will lose clean. Only deck will lose clean too is going to be this. <laughs> the other LSL core deck. Epicure. Pretty cool. Swing two. So 17 to 18. We were at 17. They have two mana left here. You could still like Blood Tithe Harvester. How cool would that be? They don't. Okay. I'm expecting Oni Cold Anvil here at some point, right? Well, we can write a Bavildi in a way there, uh, Elso Core, but I'll feel like a jerk. <laughs> I think we're just wedding announcement, you know? And Sega Genesis. Get our token. They're going to read Weatherlight Completed. Man, you're an Aristocrats player. You're playing some Weatherlight Completed. We're only playing two. And it's been... It's been okay. Hasn't been the best card in the world, but it's been okay. There's a Reckoner's Bargain. It's a fine card. They draw two. They sack their Voldar and Epicure. If you're Epicurious. Thran Portal on black. Tapped. So they have three mana this turn. Thran Portal probably does need to be in like every deck. It really does. Especially this, you know, Mardu didn't get um, the red-white Painland. Here comes Braids. That might force some weird decisions on us. They're going to sacrifice this artifact and make a sacrifice to Weatherlight completed. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to decline. I'm going to 14. Late draw. Caves. Well. I think this turn I'm going to write up Oblivion one thing. Scry Sorin? Sure. Then we'll attack. And since you're tapped out, should I go ahead and grasp this? Eh, let's save it. It's fine. They have Valorous Stance. Watch them. They kept it in their deck. We cut it from ours. Five cards in their hand and five mana. This deck can do a lot with that. If they play Lisa or something, I think we'll be very happy that we kept the Infernal Grasp in our hand. Had to make sure that these channel lands aren't... They don't read Legendary Permanent. They don't. They read Legendary Creature, so this still costs three. Opponent takes the rope out, but this, this, this honestly, <laughs> this is a pretty complex situation depending on what's in your hand. We just had to rope last game. Probably because of a very similar situation. Yeah, Fable, that's a good reason to play Marty, isn't it? In it. Resolve the gain of life. Nice. <laughs> Blood Tithe Harvester, we knew you we were, we were playing it. We knew it. I should just... I don't know why I've waited so long to kill this thing. Just die. <laughs> like, this whole time I've been waiting. Like, should I pull the trigger? I gave an opponent some grief for that earlier in the stream. And look at me now, you know? Let's play Soren. I like that. Let's make it 2-3. I like that as well. No attacks. 
Make a dude, everything gets big. Here comes the filter chapter on Fable. Discard one experimental synthesizer, draw a card. Okay. This is the Anvil deck, obviously. Does you Do you play enough artifacts? I'm not sure. I guess you can get them off of this goblin from Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That's cute. Obviously, you play Fable because you got Blood Tithe Harvester. Obviously, you play Fable because, like, you copy a creature and you get a, tr a trigger off of Ellis. And then when the creature dies at the end of the turn, you get another trigger off of Ellis. That's good. <laughs> Pretty good. Way to make Fable somehow better. Let's see what they do here. We got them in a decent board state, but they have a lot of cards left in their hand, so... Really no guarantees here. <laughs> it's a lot. Again, I don't blame them for thinking this much. All right, here they come at Soren with the Goblin token. I'm sure you'd like to not have to sack an artifact to Volted Surge this thing away. I'm sure you'd love that. Block it with a regular old tote. 2-2. Two, two. Whether like completed goes off. Let's scry. Oh, that's pretty good. I don't really have any... Again, I don't have any legends. Maybe two of is the right number for this card. If you don't have an Ellis out, Retadrabic's not great. I guess it would work with uh, Weatherlight when it becomes a creature. Only when it's a creature. Reckoner's Bargain. They sack that artifact. Uh, blood token specifically. Yeah, yeah, I bet Bargain's really good in these decks that make treasures and blood tokens and stuff. That's probably good. Here comes Anvil. We knew it was going to happen eventually. Another Braids. What a turn by the opponent. Wow. They had exactly enough mana to do all that, by the way. <coughs> they sack a creature. Do I want to do that? Maybe I do. Sure. Whether like completed scries. Meat hook. Okay. Hmm. Mm hmm. Sure. sure. See if we get a land off the top. Let's decline that. I don't think I want to. I know it sounds nuts. I don't want to lose that life. I really don't. Let's take a tax. Wow. Okay, they go to 10. Let's hook for 3. A new announcement was on top. I want to scry it away. All right, so we got lethal on board right now, and they scoop. Cool. <laughs> Whether like completed became a creature, and we have the three four token over here. And apparently, opponent has three cards in their hand and a bunch of untapped mana, but they can't do anything with that. <laughs> so cool. We just keep winning games, man. Whether like completed though, I'm pretty sure I also misplayed here. Right? I'm almost sure <laughs> that I did something wrong here. But the cool thing about this deck is that like. This is going to sound weird, but like so far the cool thing about this deck is that you have to do Aristocrats math and you will miss things and like all of that happens, you know, Aristocrats triggers can be missed. You can miss a line like in the last game where I missed Lethal. Still won the game, but I missed Lethal because I could have just like, you know, conscript into sack it, meat hook on the table, win the game because they're at one. So there are these little lines you have to look out for, and there's Aristocrats math to be done and all that, but I think there's a like a high enough density of powerful cards in this deck that you just win games, right? Like <laughs> Soren, Weather Like Completed, Wedding Announcement, Meat Hook Massacre, you just like win. So it doesn't really matter <laughs> some of the time. Maybe it does need to be Mardu. I mean, we beat the Mardu player, but I really do like the idea of some of them, some of the Mardu cards in this deck. <laughs> Fable looks good, Blood Tithe Harvester looks good. But that's why I was excited to play this version of the deck over the Cleric's version of the deck. Even though we did play with Cleric's and we won like both games with the Cleric's version. Um, I just wanted to play this one because it's got like so many super powerful cards. I think it just carries you by having good cards in it. I don't know that we actually need, you know, Retadrabic. You know, it's probably good when you get it. 
like when you get it going. And the deck does have a lot of legends. We got four LSO core, two braids, you know, two Ritagevic, um, Elisa. So the deck does have enough legends. Weatherlight completed, you know. Deck does have some legends in it. But I think Ritagevic could just be like a one. Oh, Enrica Domnathi, which we didn't see all night. Um, but I think you might be go down to one Ritagevic. Uh, take out the Welcoming Vampire that frees up two slots. We didn't need that card tonight. Um, and then maybe even take out the Dockside Chef. I don't know how many things you want to sack, but, you know, we've got wedding, wedding announcement makes tokens and stuff. Uh, you can sack, like, Colt Conscripts or Tenacious Underdog. Tenacious Underdog and Colt Conscripts are a neat little combo, right? So, altogether, I like this. Rite of Oblivion is one of those cards I don't know if it needs to be a two of or a four of. You know what I mean? <laughs> it either needs to come down a copy or go up a copy. I don't think three is correct. I just know three is wrong. We can probably take out the one Infernal Grasp, or we can go back to one Absence, one Grasp. That's probably okay. It's like maybe one more good creature, right? Are we kind of low on creatures here? Four, five. <clears throat> Six, seven, eight, nine, seven, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I'm not counting whether like completed. Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I am counting wedding announcement. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. I'm counting Soren. 25. 25 creatures. So yeah, if this deck had like at least one more, yeah, 26. A, a deck like this probably wants 28 creatures, but I just don't think we're going to make it there. And again, you can count like Soren and Wedding Announcement as creatures, so. You know, like if you wanted to cut... I really just want to cut creatures. You want to cut like one Faithful Absence and add one creature, you know what I mean? Like, I think you could probably do that. That creature should probably either be like Dockside Chef or you just add another Soren. I think we're going to add another Soren. Again, I think we have space in our four drop slots. One, two, three, four. That's five four drops. That's probably fine. That's probably fine. Yeah, look at that curve. That's fine. We got a lot of twos and then four, five, six, seven threes, five fours, one five. That's good. That's probably good. So, yeah, uh, try this. Try this deck right here. Is there a deck list available? No, because I'm stupid.